A very good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to another episode here on the Life Signatures Radio. Aren't you glad to be alive at this day and this in this age? Let me just take a tangent here for a minute. I don't know where that came from. But listen to me. You 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 are alive. Probably you're listening to me and you're well. I mean, your ears can hear, your eyes can see, you can move, you can smell, you can feel things. You're alive, you're not in pain, maybe you're not even in hospital. You should rejoice. It's a great day to be alive today. On the show, we normally talk about purpose, productivity, and resilience. And uh, we are in the middle of a series where we're talking about how you can know or how people can know that you have purpose ownership. You've owned your purpose. That's what we're discussing in these episodes. And so today we're going to look at one more detail, one more issue, one more thing that can identify you as someone who has really owned your purpose. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. When two former high school uh, students meet, what do they normally call them? All boys, all girls, whatever it is. But when you meet your former high school mate, okay, sometimes you meet them in the streets and so on and so forth. Or maybe just an acquaintance somewhere. You met someone years back and then you're meeting them in the streets again. The question normally people ask is, so what are you up to? Where are you these days? What are you up to? You know what we're asking for? Ideally, we might not know this, but we're asking this question. We're asking, what is your purpose and what have you done to own it? Are, at the moment, what, how, what are you engaged in? What are you about? That's what we're discussing in these episodes. What are you about? How can I know what you are about? How can you know what you are about? Very important for us to, to make those distinctions. And we've been doing this and we say that the very first thing, if you want to find a man of purpose, man or a woman who has basically owned their purpose, the very first thing you're going to realize is that these guys have products and services. Why? Because products and services are what you use to serve this world. You cannot have purpose that is devoid of products and services. The products and the services are what people interact. The end user, your targeted audience, your niche, they interact with your purpose through your product and through your services. If you're a speaker, then you have some kind of message. That is the product or that is the service. If you're a teacher, you have some content, some lessons, some modules, some books, some workbooks, some videos, some, you know, you know what I'm saying? Products and services are what make purpose to be actualized. They're the tools that your purpose uses to get impact into the lives of your targeted audience. So that's the first thing. The second thing, if you wanted to know someone is uh, has owned their purpose, what happens? You just see. I mean, they're all about it. They're all over it. They feel it. They have passion with it. And they're doing it. You will see them at it. Right? Y- you cannot distinguish between them and their purpose. They are just there. They are serving it. They are serving people with it. Because we said it's one thing to know your purpose. It's quite another to do your main work with your purpose. So if you want to know someone is owning their purpose, just look at the people they are serving. 
right and just look at the impact that they are making you know that this guy has owned that and look at the passion with it with which they are exuding it and they're, they're doing it you just know that this one has owned their purpose and for just clarification what is purpose ownership Papa's ownership is the identification that you have with your calling. That's it. Does it happen in one day? No, it doesn't happen in one day. It takes a while. It takes a process. It, it's an enduring thing. It, it grows on you. So you shouldn't feel bad if you don't have these things that I'm talking about. You might have identified what your purpose is and probably what you need to start working on is the ownership of that particular purpose. Because... Again, if you do not own that purpose, guess what happens? It's, I mean, it just fizzles out. A party sets in and before you know it, you've been diverted and distracted to a million other things in this world. That's why purpose ownership is important. And number three today, let's just look at another way you can know you own your purpose. You have or you are an authority in it. What's an authority? Let me ask you this question. If you wanted to consult someone on the subject of leadership, where do you go? Whom do you go to? I'm not talking about the internet. I'm not talking about Google. I'm talking about an individual. Which person do you go to in your country, the country that you're listening to? I mean, you're listening from. In this country, in Uganda, if I wanted to consult someone on the subject of leadership, I'll go to a man called Samuel A. Bakutana. Why? Because he is an authority in the subject. What's an authority? An authority is someone who has mastered a particular subject. Not just mastered it, but is a daily practitioner at it. Do you know you can master something and you can put it on the shelf? It becomes, instead of self-help, it becomes shelf-help. I'm talking about a practitioner in the thing. If I wanted to you know, consult someone about the subject of love, 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 love. Whom do I go to? Which country, in, in, in the country that you're listening from, whom is, who is that? Whom would you go to if you wanted to consult a person on the subject of love? Most probably, you will go to someone who is an authority in that subject. How did they become an authority? First of all, they zeroed in on it, they identified it, zeroed in on it, and became a practitioner at it. What is a practitioner? Someone who is daily providing solutions in a particular area. And they are passionate about it. And they keep learning about it. They are a go-to person. If you wanted to quote someone about, maybe you're writing about love, you wanted to quote someone about on, on that particular subject, whom do you go to? You go to the practitioner of the same. You understand? If you wanted to quote someone on the subject of men, in Kenya, I'll go to a man called Robert Borale. Why? Because the man has been an authority. He's becoming an authority in that subject. Let me not say he's been, but he's becoming an authority in that subject. Why? Because every now and then he's talking about it. He's in this men's gathering. That men's gathering, his videos on the internet are about men. His books are about manhood. He's becoming an authority in the subject. You understand? So if you wanted to know that you have owned a particular subject, we will know that you have owned that subject when you are an authority. You can actually be quoted. I am such an authority... <laughs> <laughs> in the in the in the subject of purpose, so much that I quote myself, and it's a guy on Facebook who is murdered. He's livid that I'm quoting myself, and I told the guy, I don't care. I have 300 plus quotes attributed to me, and I'm going to continue churning out those quotes. Anyway, authority comes from the root word author, right? Author, and I believe. Although it has a connotation of being a creator or the originator of something, it also has the idea that you are the mother of it. You can be a father, a sperm donor, a dad. What's the difference? And my, my friend told me yesterday a very powerful story. There is a craze of DNA going on, uh, people checking their DNAs in, in Uganda. And he told me the originator of that story says that there's a guy who was a taxi driver 
fell in love with a girl and they had a baby a baby girl and then when this baby was born this mother just left the guy and and went and this guy for 8 years he he first of all stopped working as a taxi driver because he needed to be with this with the daughter every day and for 8 years he's just feeding this daughter taking care of this daughter doing menial jobs and taking care of this daughter and so on and so forth and then at some point in time what happened 8 years down the line this mother comes back and says in fact the father the sperm donor comes back and says to, together with the with the woman we want our daughter back trust me this is not your daughter we can even do dna and the three of them went to do dna and guess what they were right this was not the daughter to this man who's been taking care of this girl for 8 years and when the girl had this she burst out crying and went and held on to her father which one do you think the one who's been taking care of her held on to him and not wanting to go so i'm saying an author in this idea of being an authority is both a mother and a father mother is one who takes care of the lady of 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 the child mothering the child father is one who gives the sperm and so on and so forth so the, to be the authority you can originate an idea but daily you are also a practitioner of the same you conceived it you gestated it you brought it forth right and you are taking care of it authority uh, though comes it also means that you have a leadership aspect to the to the thing every time i said every time that you have discovered your purpose you become a leader in that particular area so you know the way for it you know the way out of it you know the ins and outs out of it because you've been you've been practicing it you've been doing it you've been a practitioner at it all these years you know the way for it and you are passionately going the way the leader knows the way shows the way goes the way actually the leader knows the way goes the way and shows the way in that particular order right so people around you they see you as the go to person this is the guy that you can talk to about this this is the guy you can talk to about website design this is the guy you can talk to about men this is the guy you can talk to about women this is the guy you can talk to about sex you are an authority in that area people around you see you as the go to person the expert in the trade for it so you 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 have scars and you have wounds to show because you've been at it you've been at it you've been stuck with it for a while if people wanted to know that you own your purpose then there will be an aura of authority around it around you actually and you will see you will be seen as the thought leader in that area and people will basically start quoting you and listening every time you speak in that particular area they want to quote you an authority is a guy that cnn will call when something happens maybe a school shooting and they call some kind of psychologist there's no an authority in that particular area they will listen to you when you speak because you have on that particular purpose you know more than they do and you're passionate about it on a daily basis So I'm going to ask you a question today. Are you an authority at something or what are you an authority at? Now, if you're not an authority at anything, there's that thing that you love, that thing that you're passionate about. You can start working on being an authority. How will you get there? Number 1, identify the area. And number 2, identify the problems in that particular area. Number 3, identify the people who will be beneficiaries of your solutions that you're going to create. Number 4, start giving solutions to those people. Number 5, ask the people that you're giving solutions to for recommendations of someone else that they know that can benefit from you. Repeat. Before you know it, 2 years, 3 years, 4 years, 5 years, you are an authority in that subject. Tomorrow, we we'll look at something else until then. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh clean and inspiring.